Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Game Junk Podcast, episode 171, recording on Sunday, November 5th, 2023. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. And Huck City is not with us tonight. He is a little under the weather, needed some rest. So I hope he's, you know, on the mend, taking care of that body, that health, and he'll be with us in the near future. Uh, we had to wait. It's 1139 now. I wanted to watch the end of the Bills game and they lost. So I'm not in the best mood, but are you feeling like they would have won if you didn't watch the game? Uh, absolutely not. I don't think I have any impact <laughs> whatsoever. But I was like, they were getting blown out. I'm like, well, maybe we can start the episode early, but they always just hang around enough that I got to watch it till the end. So uh, either way, we're good to go. It's going to be a quickie. Uh, not a lot of news this week. Just Sean and I talking about what we played. We gamed pretty fucking hard last night uh, doing some <laughs> some online multiplayer VR gaming. So we'll talk about that. Uh, the game being Dungeons of Eternity. And before we get into what we played, Sean, what are you what are you wearing tonight? It's getting pretty fashionable. <laughs> yeah, I've got a nice, I mean, uh, I've entered the old man cardigan phase of my yeah. life. So, uh, you know, just a nice comfy cardigan. I'm loving well, it. If people want to check this out. If we, I think we're going to post the video. Uh, youtube.com forward slash game junk discord links are on there as well uh if you want to check that out but i had a similar thing i i had we i think for a junk mail or something uh i had a a vest you know like Colo the brand columbia a fleece mm -hmm. vest yeah which i never wore and i wore it last week and i think i've entered the columbia fleece vest phase of my life <laughs> so nice we're both getting older uh, Sean will be a little bit older in 19 minutes. We'll wait till that <laughs> happens. And speaking of the discord, I'll be talking about Alan Wake two and a Yakuza game. People were pissed with my uh, remedy <laughs> throwing shade at remedy and talking about Yakuza. So I had to admit, I haven't played these games all that much. So I have to play them before I can officially weigh in on some of this stuff. We'll see if my, uh, preconceived notions or what I was able to infer from footage and other games similar to them. If I was correct, probably I probably was correct. Uh, I tend to be right about that type of stuff, but we'll get there later. <laughs> All right, Sean, what yeah. should we start with? Should we start with dungeons of eternity? Yeah. I mean, we both played it. It was a lot of fun and uh, nobody cares about VR. So we absolutely should. Well, I feel like this is a pretty recently released game. Um, I think it was yeah, I think it came out last month. Uh, either late September or oh, I guess last month, October. Yeah. And it's a VR roguelike uh, with dungeons that you can play cooperatively. Very simple game loop of hacking and slashing through dungeons, getting gear, leveling up in between those dungeons. So a pretty simple premise. How I stumbled upon it was, I think, when I bought the MetaQuest 3, I was kind of looking up games that had come out uh, this year that I might have missed in VR, and possibly in a Reddit thread about Ghostbusters or another game, someone mentioned this game, saying, this. ever since this game, all these other games just don't stack up uh, in, in terms of you know fun roguelike gameplay. So I was like, I got to check this out. It was on sale last week. Sean, you bought it as well. And last night we finally decided to fire it up and join each other on the internet for a beautiful session. It was a ton of fun. So Sean, uh, what did you think of Dungeons of Eternity? Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of fun with it. It was quite easy to pick up and play. There was a bit of a tutorial, but it wasn't, you know, overly long and just, you know, we we kind of just jumped in and and I felt like we were having fun right away. And um, it just, it's surprising to me that there aren't any other game. I mean, I, there, I know there are some games that are kind of in this genre, hmm. but I don't know if uh, anybody has nailed it quite like this. The light brigade. I believe that's what it was called was close on PS VR two. I just found that difficulty level to be a little too uh, staggering. <laughs> playing by myself initially 
I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the, uh, that's yeah, that's what that one's called. There's also one called I think Blade and Sorcery that I keep hearing. Yeah, about. I haven't bought that, and I think until you fall, I don't think it's necessarily a dungeon crawler, but I think it's a roguelike, which I bought but haven't played. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I agree. The tutorial, as far as tutorials go, is quick. Uh, it gets to the point with everything. You pick up the mechanics pretty quickly. Uh, again, I used full motion controls with the left stick uh, rather than teleporting or blinking. And I did not feel sick at all. The only time I felt a bit of nausea was if I jumped from a really high platform and fell to the ground. There was a bit of a uneasiness, but you know, it's kind of a rush too. I was uh, sometimes you were doing it quite a bit. So <laughs> I was, uh, I was having fun. <laughs> no doubt about it. I was. Love and life in that VR under the visor last night. And we teamed up and did the tutorial dungeon again. Uh, basically, some ranged weapons. Uh, all we used is the bow and arrow, the axe, and the sword, the starter weapons. And it's just made simple quality of life uh, changes or incorporates them into a VR game, like grabbing things. Like I can grab coins from a mile away just by pointing towards them. Uh, I was never confused as to what I should do in the game, really. Uh, I wasn't overwhelmed. And I don't know, it was just simple but fun. Yeah, and I guess the, the question is, does that get boring after a while? And, uh, you know, that's what we're, I'm not sure about. Like, I know there's, seemed like there was, you know, weapon upgrades, armor upgrades, things like that. There's staffs that can cast magic, so that could definitely add to it. Um, but you know, generally, it's just it's kind of like a Diablo feel, but with the VR first person perspective. Uh, you know, it, it did remind me a bit of Skyrim in VR as well. Um, but obviously, it's it's more arcadey and 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 roguelike. I, I, are the dungeons actually procedurally generated? Do you know? I don't think so just i'm not sure but based on what we saw i think every day it updates with new ones so they're i don't i don't know if they have procedural elements at the company that generate them but i feel like they're seated dungeons every day uh that get refreshed so don't quote me on that but i i believe that's what it is so like we would always play if we wanted to try that dungeon again it would be the exact same until the next day and then it would refresh with other ones Right. I mean, definitely the tutorial one was the exact same playing it multiple times, but that could just be the tutorial. So, but yeah, yeah I don't, I, mean, I really don't have a problem with that. I think like updating them daily is more than enough, which I mean, we did one dungeon and I have to bring it up again. The battery life on the Meta Quest 3 is abysmal. It is so bad. Yeah. It's funny because in that last, um, meta connect showcase or whatever uh zuck was was talking about how you know this the quest three you, you don't need a battery pack to play it you know it's it's amazing but it sounds like you kind of do so well i could use one i think i played for about <clears throat> an hour and a half before i got my battery warning and i was playing some asgard's wrath earlier in the week with it plugged in to my computer rather than doing the air link and it still drains faster than it charges even if it's plugged yeah, in, that's, that's pretty bad. Like I, the Quest that? Two, you can play on the computer indefinitely as far as I recall. So how is this possible? How is this not brought up? How did I not know about this before I bought it? That's insane. Now I did see something today, uh, that they added an update that gives you like an option to op optimize battery life at the cost of like visuals. So I don't know if that's something that, is of interest, but apparently you can switch between like a performance mode versus a, you know, graphics mode or something. Well, I have to be honest. If I knew the battery life was this bad, I might've thought twice uh, about buying it. To be honest, it's, it's really bad, but anyway, I got it now. I got to use it. So, I mean, yeah. I don't have a ton to say about the game. We just scratched the surface, but it is nice to play a VR game where everything just works as you'd expect it to work and stuff like grabbing things from your inventory on your chest, keys, 
no matter what VR game I play, that's pretty immersive and has like a lot of uh, inventory systems and weapons. It something feels unnatural, or you go to put something in your inventory and it falls to the ground. I didn't have any issues like that playing this game, so I feel like they've just kind of focused on the fundamentals of making this game fun, which leads to my kind of observation that the graphics are nothing to write home about. They're pretty average, simple, which you were saying last night, Sean, sometimes that's fine for VR. They don't look great in screenshots, but uh, it's fine when you're playing it. But if this game is, is seems like people really like it, it's a game that they could iterate on and improve the visuals very easily. So I could see this game have a, having a very long life as a game as a service type thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, there is just something about it. Like it, it, it's definitely one of the best co-op experiences I've had. It's it's built for co-op. Um, it, it is, I believe, a, a meta exclusive. I don't think I've seen it on Before Steam I bought it, or... I looked it up on the PSVR store. It was not there. Yeah, I so I checked anywhere else. I don't know if that's like a temporary thing or if it, it's actually like a first party developer of theirs or something. I'm not sure. Or yeah, I don't remember maybe. the name of the developer, but I, it, it wasn't an Oculus Studio creation. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but we like we got into it. <laughs> well, some of us more than others, but yeah. yeah. So I mean, <laughs> you might have seen already if you're watching on youtube.com forward slash game junk, but this is an almost broken finger. <laughs> I was slaying skeletons feverishly, uh, swaying my arms, lost uh bearings as to where i was in the what do we call that thing again what do you call the the, the place said, yeah the boundary uh the room scale boundary or whatever it was and i didn't see that i was getting outside those limits and flung my hand into my uh dvd shelf or blu-ray shelf <laughs> and thought i literally thought i broke my finger initially uh, it's, it's not that bad. I was probably exaggerating. It's not even bruised yet, but I did scratch some skin off. So that's called gaming hard for the <laughs> game junk podcast. That's the sacrifices I'm willing to make for this show. Yeah, absolutely. Did you hurt yourself, Sean? Is your finger broken? Uh, I was okay uh, after this session, but you know, Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord. I was about to puke. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to push yourself. There you go. All right. I think that's it for Dungeons of Eternity, but worth checking out if you have a, a meta quest, I would say. Yeah, definitely. And and we're going to play again at some point. That, that one I can, I feel pretty confident in. I agree. We need a third. We got to get uh, Jay or Huck on this game. Yeah. Both. So we have someone to play with all the time every <laughs> yeah. night. I, That's right. The only good thing about having a battery life of an hour is you can say, well, I'm going to do my hour of VR tonight before it tells me I really can't anymore. And it's a nice little like uh, time management uh, feature. Let's call it a feature. Yeah, I agree. We need to rebrand this battery life is a good it's, thing. It's, it's like Nintendo's telling you to go outside for a bit or something. Exactly. <laughs> incorporate this into the operating system it's it's what you want you don't want to play vr for more than an hour and a half <laughs> which is actually yep. true in my in my uh, experience okay uh next anything you want to talk about well i think you got to get into alan wake too i mean I, I did play a bit of it last week didn't play any more since then so you know let's hear okay. your, your take yeah, on this. we got to get into it so how far did you make it in Alan Wake 2? The new game from Rim. I just like I think it was chap the end of chapter two. So like the first main boss that you know, um wh whatever that guy's name is. Uh I won't say. Might kind of be spoiler, but uh I'm at the, pretty much the same spot, a little further. So initially, like the vibe atmosphere of the game. I really like, I think it's, it's, it's pretty good. It story wise. I, I agree with what I said last week that I think remedy thinks they're, 
thinks they're better at that stuff than they actually are. And this is the same in control, trying to emulate stuff like Twin Peaks and David Lynch. It, it comes close, but it just has this like uh, kind of this whiff of like, or the stench of parody. Do you know what I mean? Like it just doesn't do its own thing enough. It's like all video game story, really. Mm -hmm. It's close, yeah. but just doesn't do anything that's uniquely its own. And comparatively, I would say something like, it's kind of what Metal Gear was initially, where it was trying to emulate certain movies and getting close, but it was the best at the time by far. Where ha whereas like Kojima has elevated to Death Stranding, whether you like it or not, feels like its own thing. It's unique. Uh, it feels like in some space of art in video games or pushing the boundaries of what that stuff is. So uh, I don't think this game does anything like that so far. Uh, we'll see. I've heard getting like mild spoilers from the discord and I'm anticipating some sequences or moments that better blow my mind based on how people are talking about them. But uh, first couple sections is as you stated, mostly detective type stuff, investigating crime scenes, uh, starting to get a sense of what the story is, which I will admit wasn't that fulfilling. The entering the case information is pretty much an, a trivial exercise. Uh, I don't know if there will be puzzle elements incorporated into it later. I doubt it. Uh, but a lot of the time, I would advance the story, then go to the case board, and it would autofill what I didn't do. Uh, so I kind of missed out on some of those elements. Nothing about it feels uh, revelatory, like I'm discovering anything. It's just, it's an interesting framing device, I guess. And what's the name of the space you go to? Uh, it, let's get into some of the narrative stuff. The mind. <laughs> well, I think it, they call it the mind place. And then I mind think they, they refer to it. They basically say it's a version of a mind palace. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't just call it that, but yeah, I think they call it the mind place, uh, which this is like so lame. <laughs> <laughs> Even some of the names like Saga Anderson, like what is this stuff? Uh, so <laughs> I, I'm actually at a point where I don't know if this stuff is supposed to be cheesy or or not it's yeah i truly can't tell and i'll have some similar feelings with uh, yakuza as well but i mean that's not the end of the world that's par for the course for video games as far as i'm concerned uh so i'm judging more on the gameplay uh, before we get to that technically like visually it looks amazing like it looks so good my only criticism is and it's also a compliment at the same time that you know, it does a lot of stuff at dusk and odd times of day that help, cr like that you don't see in games usually, like very late dusk where there's just a hint of light, which is interesting, but to me is a is a problem for traversing levels and getting lost in levels. And while it's a cool visual, does not help me play the game. It hurts when I'm trying to play the game. So, uh, level design. I said this with control. I feel like this is Remedy's biggest weakness. I think they are absolutely terrible level designers. And uh, this comes in many forms. I'm in one area, this kind of general forest area that I spend a lot of time in. And just when I'm returning to places or uh, you know, looking at a map and going somewhere, I get lost all the time. Like compared to where it says paths are and see, being able to see signs and landmarks that are going to point me in the right direction. They're not well lit. They don't stand out. And it was kind of like control where the map sucked and I got lost in that building all the time. And I'm sure the retorts are similar to that where, oh, it's about bureaucracy and uh, you know a confusing government building. Everyone gets lost in those. That's the point. Well, if you think that's a great way to play games, fine. That's not what I'm here for. I, I don't need that message. <laughs> and you're in a forest. You're It's scary. You should get lost and feel like you don't know where you're going. Uh, you can argue that if you want, but it certainly doesn't make it fun to play. And I feel like games have created mood and atmosphere without depending on you getting lost, trying to complete simple tasks in an area. So I think level design is the weakest part of their 
uh, the studio. And I would add to that checkpoints and I had to fight the boss again. And I had to walk all the way down to the bottom and do all this trivial stuff again, just to get to the hard part. That's annoying. And yeah, just on the checkpoint system, I guess I was a little confused. I never quite understood. Like there are like break rooms or whatever they're called, the equivalent of the Resident Evil typewriter, specific places where you go back to to save. But there are checkpoints as well within certain yeah. places. So it's kind of like, you know, yeah, I found myself a couple of times thinking like, do I need to walk all the way back to this break room or am I going to hit a checkpoint? Like, I don't know which one I need to do. 100%. It's pretty broken and I'm sure you'll get used to it by the end, but I found myself having to redo things that I don't want to do uh, to get to something that I'm probably going to fail at again. And uh, the same thing happened in control. I, it, the, the place where it would respawn me for some fight, I had to go do a bunch of shit I don't want to do again. Uh, so I don't know how they didn't figure that out, whatever. Uh, but let's get to the combat. Not a lot of it so far. Uh, I like the feel of it in general. Like it feels like they went for a direction of let's make combat less frequent, but more intense and uh, give weight to it when it happens, which I, I like that general idea. Uh, but it's kind of a, a problem with level design for me as well, where the in the forest anyway, it's very densely populated with trees and bushes. I don't know where enemies are. I think in control, you at least had a map that indicated where they were in this, especially when you fight the dogs, they seem like completely random uh, in their AI and where they spawn and move relative to the player. Uh, it was really frustrating. That first boss fight was terrible. I, I mean, like I'm hitting it. I feel like I'm doing nothing with my guns. I'm running out of ammo. The pistol's useless. I pretty much have to use the shotgun on everything and I don't, I, I love the idea of using the flashlight to generate weak points on the enemy, but it, it doesn't happen consistently and they're not that easy to hit. I feel like I'm aiming at them and it's an, another exercise in frustration. So, um, potential, but as I said on the discord, so much friction to do anything in that game and it's, it's a good game. I'm not going to say it's bad. I'm going to keep playing it for now. But everything I do just gets under my skin a bit. Like, this is more frustrating than it needs to be. And we've talked about the idea of reducing the friction, uh, which I borrowed from Graham at Drinkbox and other people. I think he might have borrowed from others. But everything it does just makes me want to play it a little less rather than great games that I just want to keep playing them. So, uh, again, it's it's pretty good. Uh, I just, I feel like I'm making myself play it at this point so I can shit on it at some point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I want to keep playing it just because I feel like things clearly are going to pick up and that's where the game gets interesting. I, you know, I thought I might like the detective stuff, but as you were saying, it just feels kind of, it, it's just there to progress the story. It's not really gameplay per se. Yeah. Um, and as I said, it's early. If they, that case board starts to have interesting mechanics or actual puzzles in it, then I will take that back. But uh, I feel like it's making the game more boring than fun. Uh, there was one. Oh, I, I'll say some other things I really liked. I love how the game starts. Like the character you're playing as, as like this kind of strange intro to the game. I thought that was excellent. I thought it could have last, lasted longer, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I thought that was uh, really neat and was a good way to kind of set the mood for the game. The lighting is great. Anytime you go to like a building, it it's, it's pretty solid. I've only spent some time in the city. Um, some things were better than others in the city, uh, but we'll see how that progresses as well. The, oh, the last thing that I really am not crazy about in the, the mind place, <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, the, what is it called when you, you infer stuff about witnesses? Uh, pro profiling mode is that uh, where, uh, you know, the character you're playing as is some like gifted detective that can 
like figure out all these things to advance the story, which I would prefer not to go to the menu to do that. Something should happen in the game and like, just tell me when it happens. Why do I have to go to a menu to figure out what, what this person found out? It's just extending the length of things. And I, I really like how in the last of us and other games, even though it's getting to be too much, uh, like dialogue and story incorporated while I'm moving, while I'm exploring or while I'm lost, at least give me something, uh, that I can learn. So I'm, it's not a complete waste of time, but I will say that's happening way too much in games. Now there is too much, uh, extra dialogue. So what game was I just playing? Or was like, can, it was another game. Can you, uh, you Spider-Man? It's just constantly someone calling you, uh, checking in with you. Yeah. Jameson on a podcast, like shut up. Let me play the fucking <laughs> game enough. We don't need to be bombarded with di- useless dialogue constantly. I'm having fun. I'm listening to something else. Anyway, I don't <laughs> know what you're saying. Yeah. No, I mean, I think this is, I've seen articles about this too. Like people definitely acknowledge we've hit a point where it's like the writing is better, getting better. The dialogue is getting better, but now there's too much of it. (laughs) You know, like you need some space to just explore as a player. So, and I know I've said this before when it comes to like collectibles and there's lots of written dialogue on papers uh, scattered throughout the world in Alan Wake too. I feel so bad for the writers that have to fill these, these game worlds with absolute like fluff and garbage and AI is probably just going to make it worse. Cause I'll be able to create more of it faster. Uh, and like if I, I'm trying to think of a game where every collectible, there weren't many of them and they mattered and I was excited to get one or they revealed something interesting. And the only one in recent memory that I can think of was cocoon. There weren't a ton of these, those hidden creatures that you could awaken. And every time I found one, it was really satisfying and uh, I wasn't searching for them constantly. So still a lot of work to do with uh, collectibles and exploration in modern games. Yeah. I mean, that stuff like, well, I'll probably, I'll probably get into this a little bit with Talos principle too, but I just think there's, there's a fine line between like, you want to give little bits of things to flesh out the story, but it's kind of got to be optional too. Cause if people don't want to go around and collect this stuff, like you don't want yeah. them to miss important things. So it's like, I don't know how you balance that, but it's uh yeah. Need some work a little bit. So I'm probably based on the discord. It gets better as it goes on. So I am curious to possibly finish it, but I'm kind of like, just like control. It's about a 7.5 for me right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I I'm not, I find it really hard to judge based on what we've seen so far, but it does frustrate me that that you know I feel like I played a decent chunk of the game and I that, hours and and probably haven't even really seen what it has to offer. So I mean that's not a great thing. <laughs> you probably want to show off some good stuff early on in the game, but uh, I understand there's probably a bit of a a slow burn, a slow build to this game. So yeah, I want to give it a chance. I'm going to keep playing it, but um, and and. I hey, I trust our uh, our our many fine folks in the Discord who are loving this game. So, uh, you know, I agree. I, and I keep the people who are praising it tend to be people I agree with about games for the most part. So, I'm going to keep pushing through. Yep, Sean, why don't you talk about uh, Talos Principle Two that came out this week? Sure. Oh, before yeah. you do that, sorry, have to say. Happy birthday, buddy. It's after midnight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Get on that youtube.com forward slash game junk and uh, send Sean some birthday wishes <laughs> and or on X or Twitter at film junk. Let him know how much you love him. I love you, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. Love you, too. <laughs> um, oh, I, I should ask about for Alan Wake 2. Did you play on PS5? Yes, I did. Okay. I I'm curious like what it looks like on PC because I've heard that high end PCs it looks amazing, but like I oh, guess I have to buy it again. No, I'm not telling you to, but like I just Oh, I kinda want to now. <laughs> but I know no, you didn't buy it because it's that. 
No, but I know you didn't buy it because it's on Epic. It's not on Steam, so it's kind of it's a two out of three, two out of ten platinum difficulty ranking too. So hmm. definitely played a role. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yes, Talos Principle Two came out this week. First, first game. It's awesome. I love it. I think it's potentially the best portal like since portal i guess i don't know is that a a genre yet but like you know just great uh first person puzzle game that has just lots of interesting kind of philosophical stuff to to ponder as you're going through it would we uh, put the witness as a portal like or does it need like a, a shooting mechanic yeah i don't that's an interesting question i mean this one i guess doesn't really have a shooting mechanic either but it it yeah i don't know and it weirdly i i actually feel like it is borrowing a little bit from the witness because this one felt compared to the first talos principle there it feels like there's a little more a little bit more going on in between the puzzle areas like like the world itself like there's kind of stuff to explore and discover there I, it's, it's still early so i can't say for sure but i just kind of got that feeling um but it's weird because the game starts off you do a few you know maybe like 12 puzzles that are just very similar to the first game feels like exactly the same and you're kind of picking up where you left off almost and then all of a sudden it changes and there's actually kind of this story that's introduced and there's actual characters so you're you're playing as like a sentient ai robot basically in a in a civilization of robots and um and so there's there's dialogue happening and then when you kind of set out to to explore and do more puzzles you're checking in with like a team of other robots that are also exploring and so, so it's kind of weird like there's there's more dialogue <laughs> as we were just discussing which isn't you know I kind of like the the solitary nature of some of these puzzle games and it's kind of bugging me a bit, but you kind of um, answer you kind of answered an earlier question. I feel like Portal and Portal One, or sorry, Portal and Portal Two kind of nailed good dialogue and frequency of dialogue and just letting you li- linger with a puzzle when you needed to. Uh that stands out as how to do dialogue properly to me. Yeah, no, I agree. And and this one also has, as the first game did, a lot of like kind of things you'll see in in the world where it's like a, I don't know, a, a computer console where you have to read some text, like there's text messages. Now there's like a, like a social network where like people are commenting about things and you can like respond to them. And it's like, it's a bit much. So I'm not loving that stuff. But, um, but there's, I'm starting to see now new, puzzle elements that they're they're putting into play and uh it feels pretty difficult like right off the bat so i'm you know it feels like it's intended that you've played the first game before you come into this because i feel like it would be potentially frustrating if you just jump right into part two but uh it looks great i am playing it on the steam deck so i'm assuming it looks even better on on a, a powerful pc uh i think it's on consoles as well but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have too much else to say, but I just, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to keep playing it for sure. And if you are kind of in the mood for, for that kind of first person puzzle game, I would recommend it. And yeah, I just, I think there's some interesting, interesting stuff to think about. You know, one of the early things they give you a quiz about who, cause the person you are, you're like this thousandth robot to be, uh, quote unquote born in this civilization. And so you kind of have this special role in the civilization because of it. So they're like interviewing you and asking you questions. And they're like questions that as a human being are like, you know, uh, like what's an example. It's like, uh, do you have trouble answering these as a human being? (laughs) Well, yeah, they're like, they're meant to be like very divisive things. Like, you know, like, do you believe that everything in the world can be explained scientifically or are there things we don't understand? You know, questions like that. And it's like a whole series of them that kind of make you stop and go, huh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so it's like, that's the kind of game it is. It kind of plays with stuff like that and 
and it's kind of got this ancient um history sort of feel to it like you're you're robots but you're discovering this these ruins that you don't know who made them and they feel like ancient ruins and so it's kind of pulling all of this stuff together it's uh, i don't like the witness a bit <laughs> and yeah uh, yeah i guess that's true although i don't know how the witness ends but i have some ideas uh i have one question so connecting it to portal 2 portal 2 advanced portal one with the idea of the gels and like the or liquids or whatever that you could use to s- that was the big addition mm-hmm. is there a, have you hit a big addition that kind of changes the game yet uh nothing huge i just like one of the main things you do in in the first game is a lot of connecting beams of different colored lasers and you have like these sort of reflectors that you have to put in certain spots and now they have ones that it's like they take in different colors and it's like, if you take in a red and a blue, it'll output a green. And so you have to play with that. But uh, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. I might need to play this lately on my Instagram. I've been watching a lot of videos that are just mixing paint color. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. I can't stop watching them. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I feel like you probably dig it, but uh, you know, it's, it it is a little bit slower paced. Like it's not like, I feel like portal has some actiony chase kind of sequences at points. It doesn't really have anything like that as far as I can tell. So, but yeah, I I like it quite a bit. All right, moving on. Uh, And this is really not going to settle anything to be honest. Just, (laughs) I want to prepare everyone for disappointment right now. Uh, I played a Yakuza game. So I put a poll uh on the discord but which one i should play first and everyone said yakuza zero and what was the other uh like a dragon possibly we we should say a lot of people corrected us after our confusion last week and i do feel like i actually like kind of understand at least oh i get it i do yeah the franchise Uh, is 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 a little bit uh crazy but yeah it's i i get it now I agree. I'm starting to understand the continuity and naming of the series, which was literally, I had no idea before and it's bouncing around all the time. So especially after looking up the game I played. So I had two of these games uh, as part of my PlayStation plus library and they were uh, Yakuza Kiwami and like a dragon. And I think it should, should say, I think almost all these games are on game pass. Like they? They, that's, that's a big thing is that, yeah, they have the Yakuza franchise basically. So uh, I got to hook up my series, series X. Or I mean, you don't have to, you know, it's, just, it's an option, <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I was like, okay, I'll download this quick. And then I, I just, I was going to play Alan Wake too, but then I fired this up instead because it was pretty late. I didn't want to get too scared. And, uh, I didn't know that this was a port of the original Yakuza that released on PS2. So I was playing it. I'm like, this feels so old. Like it's wait, Yakuza zero. Is that? No, 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 no. This is the first Yakuza game. I believe called Yakuza that released on PlayStation two. It is like a remaster uh, of that. That was made for PS three and PlayStation four. Right. Later on, it was released in 2016. Gotcha. So, uh, it, I'm kind of getting a sense of what the series is about. There's definitely just odd stuff happening all the time. It's strange. It's slow paced. Uh, the combat is basically dynasty warriors punch, like mash a, a button and then terminate at different times for different effects, uh, or finishers. And this game really doesn't have a whole lot going on. It's like a very s- small open world uh, reminiscent of many other games around that time, GTA and maybe a few others, but this is not the game to judge this series. This feels like something either you played it when it came out and it's a fun kind of nostalgia trip to play it again, or you're super in or got into the series and want to go back to the origins and kind of experience that stuff. So uh, I certainly didn't think it was great. I'm assuming the series improves uh, quite a bit uh, up until current day stuff. But yeah, I'm not judging Yakuza yet, but this game probably isn't for me. 
Well, just, and I mean, to be fair, I think Yakuza Zero and Yakuza Like a Dragon are more recent ones yes. that are like supposedly better entry points into the series, but I would assume um, combat is better and some other quality of life stuff. So, uh, that's fine. Like I said, I, I was not aware of what this game was when I started it. It was just conveniently in my library. So I will probably go to Yakuza zero at some point and try that because I have that on steam and the like a dragon apparently is kind of turn-based combat, which is not my, my thing. I do not like turn-based combat. Yeah. I, I remember hearing that and I would probably start with zero as well. I think that's the one Huck played, right? Yeah. And I should have started there. I just didn't feel like walking downstairs to my computer that night. Fair enough. So stay tuned for <laughs> Yakuza update in the near future. I think in the, the other spinoff or whatever it is comes out this week, I think, right? Does it? The, uh, the man with no name or whatever oh, okay. that one is. Uh, so is that a new yeah. branching story path? Maybe it's if it's on Game Pass, maybe I should play that. It is on Game Pass, but I don't know. I don't know what it continues from. I don't know if it continues directly from like Yakuza, like a dragon, or what. <laughs> so again, let us know, or don't. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just if the reviews are good, that might be the one I just. Play. Um, okay. I did want to talk about Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I don't know how much have you been going back to this at all or no? No. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing. I really haven't returned much to Wonder or Spider Man 2, which kind of says something about both games. I got to be honest. Yeah. Well, it's weird because after we talked about it, I guess two weeks ago, I, ha- I don't have I played Spider Man 2? Maybe a little bit. But I started I playing a little bit of both, just not much. Right. And then I started playing Wonder a little bit more. And I think I just hit that point where I was like, okay, I'm seeing more variety in the Wonder flowers and what they're, you know, the effects they're creating. And every time I went to a new world, it was kind of like completely new mechanics and things, as as we've said. Uh, so I got really into it. I, I'm actually really close to finishing it now. Like I'm in the kind of Bowser world or whatever. And I, yeah, I'm i really enjoying it. I mean, the one thing that is kind of like I'm torn on, like it, I, it is, you know, kind of hitting in terms of the level of creativity I wanted from this game. I think it's there. But the one thing I am noticing, and I think you mentioned this when we talked about it, is I'm seeing borrowing of ideas from other kind of indie games and it's like it's cool they work in the the situations they're bringing matches and stuff like that like no like uh like one of the wonder sequences that i've seen multiple times rayman what's that some remind me of rayman legends yeah rayman origins and legends definitely an influence throughout this game i agree 100 percent but i was surprised that like there's some stuff that felt a lot like about a blob the uh the drink box game like there's sequences where you turn into like a blob and you're like attached to the wall and and kind of bouncing around That's and stuff blobs attack isn't it uh well i think the first one was called was it about a blob oh, I'm or, embarrassed. or tales from space or something <laughs> but yeah i mean uh, either of those games tales from uh, space about a blob we're both embarrassed yes and then um there was something else that I was reminded of. I, I don't know. I can't remember now, but like just kind of indie games that I feel like they're drawing from and like, it's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, you know, you're used to Nintendo being the ones leading the way, doing something totally new. And it feels like they're playing catch up a bit. And uh, I mean, it's, it's fine. It's just interesting. I don't know. I didn't expect that necessarily. All right, go after Sean this week, everyone. He's saying Nintendo <laughs> is ripping everyone off. They are absolute trash, and they are not pioneers of the industry. <laughs> I'll translate what he's saying, and you're going to have to let him know how you feel about that. You could say that. I, this game is still going to be somewhere in my top 10 for sure. Like It's, it's great, but uh, yeah, just you could see the influences. Well, I'm going to have to acknowledge something, uh, which is... 
this is your year, bud. When I said it says something about those games that I don't want to return to them, it also says something about me. I'm just not <laughs> gaming hard. I like I don't know what it is. I'm in a gaming lull. I went super hard in May and June, and since then I've just been not getting into games. So when we do our if I, unless I make a late season push, like holiday season, just game till my eyes pop out of my head every day. <laughs> you're going to crush me when we do our stats. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> I can't let that happen. I got to, I got to start pushing hard. Hey man, I'm, I, I'm motivating you. So uh, I might have to like leave my on. PlayStation five running at night with games. Like just get my hours. <laughs> I'm not beyond yeah. that. Um, I think that's it for me though. I don't think I played anything else. How about you? I think that's it. But uh yeah, I mean the the year end thing is like, gonna be shit, interesting. I, I miss forgot something huge I played. What's that? I bought Call of Duty Modern Ooh. Warfare three because you got early access to the campaign. <laughs> you and your early access. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually played it this time. I played like the first two missions. And then I saw IGN reviewed the campaign. Did you see the review score? I think it was a was it a four? Four out of ten. Yikes. Uh, I will say, so the new thing this year is open missions. So it's basically taking the mechanics and ideas from Warzone and making levels built as small open areas uh, that you can search for things, find enemies, plan your own path, take lots of paths to get to goals. Uh And so it starts with a traditional kind of linear level in call of duty. And it's like a night kind of raid on a prison on an Island, which was, which is pretty cool. I enjoyed that quite a bit, actually more than the intro levels to the last few. Uh, And it it was spectacly and fun. Like I expect call of duty to be second area. I was doing open missions and I, I didn't mind it at first, but it got pretty repetitive and boring and kind of felt like an excuse to just use Warzone stuff to extend the length of the game. Uh, it didn't feel like all that amazing. And it certainly didn't feel like what makes Call of Duty great, which is set pieces and moments and pushing the boundaries of technology because it's like limiting what you can do at any given point in time. So maybe they'll improve, but. I certainly wouldn't go a four. Uh, I hear it's very short as well. The campaign, which doesn't really bother me, but I guess I get it. Uh, I've heard it's like four hours maybe or something like that. Oh, really? I mean, I feel like they're usually not that long, but four hours, I guess. Yeah, that's a bit short. How long to beat? Um, But it's, uh, it it was okay. It's nothing oh this is the old modern warfare 3 do they have to call these games the same thing as previous entries in the (laughs) series when are people going to learn how to name things it's not that hard (laughs) just don't use the same name for different things yep this is not complicated oh now i'm getting angry all right (laughs) it was okay it it looked good uh nothing mind-blowing call of duty and i mean i i've heard bad things not just from ign like it seems like it's you know people kind of shit on call of duty anyway but like it feels worse than usual this year so um kind of curious what that means but well i'm glad i bought it early and got to figure that out for myself (laughs) (laughs) uh i I did want to mention so like you know we were just talking about the um uh like year-end kind of stuff which is a couple months away but uh, i saw this article that 2023 sees more than two dozen games score 90 and up on metacritic so apparently i don't know what the percentages are but it's like way more games ranking over 90 percent on metacritic than usual so i'm curious just you know what we're saying right now is it a better than usual year for video games frank uh, it's a very good year. I, I can't say just yet. Like Jedi Survivor, an absolutely amazing game. Tears of the Kingdom, great game. Clearly, people like 
those open world Zeldas more than I do. So they're going to get high reviews. Uh, Mario Wonder, I'm sure. I don't even know if it made 90, but I'm probably uh, pretty sure it did. So I would say generally it's a very good year for gaming. I haven't thought about it as like whether it's one of the best. Uh, not for me personally. I can definitely say there were other years where I remember playing more games and like being super into them and wanting to finish them. The only games like that for me this year were Survivor and Tears of the Kingdom. Hmm. And yeah, by I mean, the end, Tears of the Kingdom was becoming uh, more frustrating than fun. And I just wanted to get to the end. Right. I just, I just feel like reviewing is, it means nothing now. I, I, I hardly ever agree with reviews anymore. Uh, I feel like they're, way off base they're too generous people are too nice uh it's kind of ruining criticism in general and there's also the fact that certain standards have been established that you know it's hard to fuck up a game the way you used to be able to fuck up a game like there's certain controls that are predefined people are going to expect uh, things are built into engines now and you know it's hard to like fundamentally ruin a game out of the gate when you're making it right so uh and a lot of the AAA games have enough money that they can take the time they need to make sure they're good uh and that's yeah. probably a reflection of that as well yeah you definitely i mean those games the AAA games that cost so much money to make they they're not going to risk having you know some control scheme that is going to piss people off or like you know they're going to have all that stuff yeah. ironed out but I guess that's the question sometimes is Unless like the game is beyond fixing, which I would say the, the, the example of that this year would be Redfall, Something that probably should have been yeah. good, but they, they did not decide to see it through. They're just like, no, this game is not going to, not going to do it. And let's just get it out and move on. Right. And, and you know, I, I don't, oh, I haven't, I haven't actually looked. And what? Baldur's Gate three, like people absolutely love Baldur's Gate three. And right. that game also benefited from having early access for I don't know how many years to keep polishing it and like they had cash flow. So that's one reason why that game probably did so well. Yep, that's a fair point, I think. But yeah, I guess I just like I'm thinking of I mean, I haven't looked at the list of what's over 90. I, I think some of them are like obviously we've got lots of remakes and ports and games that have come out in previous years that are probably still up there but you know it's that question of like if every game is pretty solid like what's putting you what, like what's the difference between like an 80 or like a 95 like what's what's putting you over that edge and it's kind of like i don't know it's an interesting question it's something that i i always like think about like you know is it doing something new like it's kind of what i'm looking for but i don't know if there's tons of games this year that really did that I don't understand these meta scores because like I'm looking at this year's top games and I don't remember them being this high before. It's like they went up. Tears of the Kingdom is a 96. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is a 96. And then you get weird stuff like, I don't know if these count for the numbers you're talking about. Witcher 3 Complete Edition. Yeah, that like, yeah, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Where I'm like, yeah, I don't like. Metroid you know. Prime Remastered is on there and I can tell you right now, if anyone who actually played through Metroid Prime Remastered, it is no longer uh, the game it was before. If you're just giving it that score because of what it was in 2001 or whatever, that's fine. But you cannot play that game now and still say it's a 9 or a 10 out of 10. It just You can't. It's impossible. Uh, <laughs> unless you're just blinded by nostalgia. Um, Resident Evil 4 remake. Tetris Effect Connected is on here because it got a new version in 2023. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, an expansion pass is on here. Uh, even Diablo is a 91. How, how is that possible? Yeah, I mean, that game has definitely had mixed, a lot of mixed opinions on it. So I don't know how it's out of 91, but... Something I is Quake 2 Enhanced Edition... Uh, yeah, something is up here. These scores are completely inflated and, uh, whatever, who gives a shit? We're going to tell people what, what's what anyway. Don't even listen to Metacritic. Just listen to us. 
Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a flawed system, as with Rotten Tomatoes and all these other things. But I don't know. Headline just caught my attention. And I've heard people saying generally that it's it's a really good year for games. And it's it's been good, definitely. But I'll just be curious by the time we get to the end of the year, how we kind of feel overall about it. Do not underestimate. Like, I remember going to the one time I went to like a GDC and went to parties and stuff like that. All the the press are there. They get invited to parties. They like they're in with all the developers. They're friends with everyone. And like, I don't think they could say I can eliminate that bias or connection when they're reviewing stuff. It's it's impossible. I feel like just in general, the nature of the industry review scores are by default inflated. And especially yeah, that's- thinking about smaller uh, like up and coming review sites and stuff like that. And streamers that like are just trying to get exposure and get more games or free games. They're going to be nicer about stuff too. And I don't know. It's, it's fucked up, dude. I mean, I don't disagree with that. I guess it's just, if you're comparing year to year, that should always be the same. So I don't know if that affects it, but yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like there's, I, I cannot confirm this, but if you look at how many reviews are contributing to Metacritic scores now, they've gone up and they're probably inflated by like newer reviewers that probably don't have the, as, as exposure to as many games to be able to stack them up against others. I don't know. That I could be way could off. Be, yeah. that, but uh either way this was not a quickie this was 56 minutes of the best gaming talk you're going to hear on the internet that's just <laughs> out there absolutely uh so thanks for checking us out youtube.com forward slash game junk for the visual accompaniment to the show and discord links sean is at at film junk and huck i hope you're feeling better soon uh Take care, get some rest, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.